And let's take you back to Ottawa now, where we're getting plenty of reaction today after China gave a Canadian diplomat until Saturday to leave the country in retaliation for Ottawa's expulsion of a Chinese consular official. Joining me now is Margaret Nocton Johnson. Sorry, Margaret, about the head intro there. Uh, Margaret, thank you so much. The senior fellow of the Institute of Science, Society and Policy at the Ottawa University of Ottawa. Margaret, how do you read the situation? Well, it's, it's terrific that we sent him home. We were a week late doing it. Um, I'm pleased to see the Prime Minister saying very uh, sincerely and firmly that we will not be intimidated. Uh, you know, that's, that's the right message to send to China on this. But he should have uh, been sending the diplomat home a week ago when it became public. And really, um, uh, 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 two years ago, when it first uh, was learned by CSIS that this threat had been made against a sitting member of parliament. And what do you take for this retaliation, this tit for tat game here? How, like, how long could this go on for? Well, I don't think we should uh, assume uh, any additional retaliation. Uh, China has announced that they will be sending one of our consuls home. Uh, and that's the normal course uh, in a case like this where we've expelled someone for cause. Um, the other side, to, you, to save face, wants to send one of our folks home. Um, I think it's a mistake to suggest that there should be anything beyond that because to suggest that really means that China is uh, being treated like it's... Um, it's got bigger powers and and it's just assumed that it will uh, punish those countries that that do not uh, stay in line with with what they're being told to do by Beijing. Uh, th I, that's why it was very disturbing to me to see during the past week that there were discussions of um, the uh, the suggestions on the part of the Minister of Foreign Affairs that we were assessing what to do in this case, and and considering the ramifications, the possible retaliation of, in economic terms, because you know we our principles are our principles. We should be standing by our member of parliament, and and we have, but we shouldn't be weighing that against how much trade we might lose. And so I I was very concerned to see that uh, and. I have no doubt that behind closed doors, the Chinese officials have been making uh, dramatic threats at Canadian officials. This is their style. Catherine, uh, Margaret, excuse me, just quickly, um, how do we better this relationship or where does this relationship then go from here? Well, I think that um, our, our trade will continue uh, because we want their products and they want ours. Uh, those companies that are too invested in China and risk losing a lot if they lose their trade overnight should be using the Indo-Pacific strategy that the government has announced for support to move to other countries in the region, at least part of their business, uh, to countries where rule of law is practiced. Um, and in addition, our person-to-person, people-to-people, uh, ties will continue. We've got 1.4 million Canadian, uh, Chinese Canadians here. And, uh, and so uh, there will be always a lot of contact between the two countries. We just need to, to manage our risk a little better. Margaret, thank you so much for your insight today. We really appreciate you weighing in. Margaret McQuaig Johnson, Senior Fellow, Institute of Science, Society and Policy at the University of Ottawa. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.